millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am, but Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. Nerdwallet finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. Hey, I'm Shauna Compton Game. This is Millennial Money. And today we're talking the other insurance, flood and earthquake, what you need to know. Millennial Money with Shauna Compton Game. It will expand your brain. Everyone knows that putting money aside in savings is really important. But then what? Should you keep your savings locked in a CD for a higher rate or keep them liquid in a money market? Can your checking account help you save too? Or is it about creating the right combination? We believe real banking is a conversation. Let's talk about the savings options that are right for you. Learn more at sandyspringbank.com. Member FDIC. Happy Labor Day. I hope you are enjoying your day off today. Hopefully you have the day off. I know a lot of us still have to actually work on Labor Day. But if you have the day off, I hope that you are relaxing with friends, family, barbecuing, eating something incredibly scrumptious. It has been a kind of an unrelenting heat wave here where I live in Los Angeles. And I know that I should absolutely not complain at all about weather right now with what's going on down in Houston and Hurricane Harvey uh, cleanup. So I'm not complaining. I'm just saying that it has been ridiculously hot. Like I'm talking like 115 degrees every single day. It's just the air conditioning is just working like overtime and it's just crazy. It's like you don't even want to go outside. So I think Labor Day for me is going to actually be spent inside on the couch watching some TV and movies and just desperately trying to stay cool. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about the other types of insurance that we don't hear about very often. And I think that this is definitely important considering Hurricane Harvey, what we've all seen on TV. I mean, it's just complete disaster. I have, uh, I don't know, fortunately or unfortunately, I don't know what, what the right word is, lived through many hurricanes myself, tornadoes, of course, and earthquakes living in California. I feel like I've kind of got, you know, the gamut of all of the natural disasters. And really, I think the one that hit the hardest was the earthquake back in the 90s in uh, Northridge. And actually, half of our house, including our chimney, completely detached from the house. And uh, there was a nice kind of like a gaping hole in our house when the earthquake hit. And honestly, I think today, still today, I have some like PTSD from that earthquake. It was like something I can't even explain to you. Uh, it, it literally felt like the Jolly Green Giant was picking up our house, shaking it back forth every which way. All the transformers blew on kind of the west side of Los Angeles. And so 
all of the power was out and you couldn't see anything. And so just, just like imagine being on, you know, a crazy ride, like a Disneyland that is, uh, you know, completely dark and (laughs) everything that you're standing on is just shaking violently back and forth. And I I remember, you know, coming down our stairway because we were all going to go outside because that's one of the safest places when there's an earthquake. And the chandelier was just swaying back and forth so much so that it almost touched each side of of the walls. And I mean, there was a a lot of distance for it to swing back and forth. Uh, We had to duck when we were coming down the stairs so that we didn't actually get hit by the chandelier. Um, We spent hours and hours outside in our car until the sun came up and then we could figure out, you know, what the damage is. And I mean, it was just... It was incredible, really. We had been through earthquakes before, but this was a whole other beast. I mean, everything from the refrigerator came out. There was maple syrup all over the floor. Our stuff was absolutely everywhere, not to mention, of course, the hole in the side of the house. Uh, Pool water had splashed out of the pool. I mean, it was just, you didn't know what to think. And I I was a kid and I was completely freaked out. And we had aftershocks, I think for months after that. I mean, my dad, my mom and I slept in a trundle bed (laughs) in one, in one bed together for like a month. I mean, it was just, I literally was like paranoid. I remember the first day that they were both out of the house together. And I just was, I mean, it was like, I was in this other, um, I, 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 I just, I couldn't even like sit still. I was so scared that I, something was going to happen and I was going to be by myself. Um, it was, I mean, it was, it was more traumatic than even it sounds right now. And yet, you know, I didn't experience what a lot of people are experiencing right now that live in Houston, right? I, I was able to still be in my home. They fixed the side of the house. You know, we were still able to live there. We just had to clean up all the stuff. But, you know, we, we talk a lot about uh, homeowners insurance and renters insurance and how important those are. If you have a mortgage, you need home, you have to have homeowners insurance, right? Rentals, rental insurance is optional. Although I always suggest that you have renters insurance. If you got stuff in your house, that's valuable. And the answer is everybody's got stuff in their, in their house, their apartment, their condo, wherever you live, you know, if something happened to that stuff, you would want to be able to replace the stuff. It just, it just makes sense. Right. And renter's insurance is so inexpensive, um, that I, that I always suggest that you at least look into it because I think it's a very worthy expense, but you know, a lot of times what people think is, Oh, my homeowner's insurance or my renter's insurance are going to cover me in a flood or an earthquake. And that's unfortunately not always true and not talked about a whole lot of the time. In fact, I think the statistic, uh, I might be wrong in this, but the statistic I think CNN said was that about 78 to 80% of the people in the Texas area did not have flood insurance. And you might be thinking, well, that's kind of crazy, isn't that? Because, you know, they live near the coast and they're kind of in the hurricane area, but you know, a lot of people don't buy these specialty insurance because if they don't have to, you know, it's, it's expensive. If you're on a budget, if you're, um, you know, getting by, like the last thing you're going to think about is that your house is going to be completely flooded out. I mean, this was like, what, like a 800 year flood. I mean, we have never seen this kind of thing before. So of course you wouldn't be thinking, about flood insurance, right? Or earthquake insurance if you live in California. So I want to talk about some interesting things that I found because I was even doing my own research here uh, to bring this podcast to you. And I thought, you know, I want to just, I want to really understand this myself because this isn't a topic I deal with a lot in depth, but um, I mean, I, I obviously know a lot about it. So regular homeowners insurance does not cover flooding right? You need a policy that's offered through uh, the government's national flood insurance program. But these top out at $350,000 in coverage for your home and its contents. So if you want higher amounts, you're actually going to need a supplemental type of of coverage, right? And people tend to associate floods with like a 
total loss, but actually the average flood claim for U.S. homeowners is only about, only I should say, this is a lot of money, is about $39,000. That's according to the flood insurance program. But you don't need to live in a floodplain to buy insurance. This is interesting. So if you do the mortgage company, they're going to require that you buy coverage. So if you live in a floodplain, it's not an option. You have to have flood insurance. But if you live in an area where, you know, you could get hurricanes, I'm talking, you know, uh, Louisiana, Texas, Florida, you know, all those states, even the Carolinas, you can buy your own policy through your property and casualty agent. So that's the agent where you're going to buy your renter's insurance, your homeowners, your car insurance. It's all going to be the same thing. Now, there are a couple myths about it, right? So some people think like, okay, I get a flood insurance policy. I'm good, right? Cover me for everything. Well, not so fast. So when it comes to the actual structure of your house, again, the uh, federal flood insurance policies, they top out, right? So if you have, let's say, a $350,000 house that's a total loss because of the flood, the most you can actually recoup through the program is the cover, the, uh, I should say, it will cover the actual structure itself. So you could lose your house, right? And uh, the depending on the value of the house, it could cover the structure of the house, but not the possessions inside your house, which most of us tend to think are probably more important than the structure, although I, I beg to differ. But um, so for the personal possessions, the cap is $100,000 under the federal program. So, I mean, I know you might be thinking $100,000, well, that's got to be enough. Well, if you live in a you know, a fairly decent sized house, let's say even if you're starting your family or you just got married, you know, if you think about TVs, if you think about computers, if you think about phones, if you think about other maybe electronic devices you would have, let alone home appliances, um, all the stuff, your clothes, your, your collections of stuff, all that stuff, your bikes, I mean, on and on and on, you could easily hit $100,000, right? Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news, well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps but I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. It gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built-in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial financial anxiety, anyone? Yeah, you're not alone. But worrying about it, it doesn't help. Earnin does. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. You just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then you can access up to $100 per day as you work and leave an additional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. So how would you spend the money you get from Earnin? Well, 
Honestly, my hubby and I have been feeling a little bit disconnected lately. That's what happens after you've been together about 12 years. So I would spend the money on a special date night with dinner and maybe bowling, you know, to bring back some of that giggly excitement that we both felt at the beginning. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security, gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E-A-R-N-I-N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in Talkin, T-A-L-K-A-N, money under podcast when you sign up. It will really help the show. Talkin money under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash TOS for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank & Trust, member FDIC. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, Right. For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. Have you ever wondered what it's like to be buried in an avalanche? weird foreign feeling of despair or how it feels to crash a skydive i remember hearing a thud feeling my body hit the ground or how you would react if you were being attacked by an alligator at the end of my leg is this huge alligator head on my leg these are the stories you'll hear on the podcast called what was that like true stories told by the actual person who went through it you'll hear from a victim of an attack dragging me into the bathroom and saying, I'm going to kill you, now you're going to die. You'll hear from a man who discovered a baby. How could this be? How could there be a baby on the ground? And you'll hear actual 911 calls. Plinky County 911, there's a man at my back door. He's trying to get in. What Was That Like is a podcast about real people in unreal situations. Search for What Was That Like on any podcast app or at whatwasthatlike.com. Okay, so if you already have insurance, though, through this federal program, then you can buy what's called excess flood insurance through a private carrier, and that's going to have limits above these national limits, right? So you can always kind of stack on top of. Now, when you stack on top of, it's more money, right? And flood insurance, earthquake insurance, they're not cheap. These These are pretty expensive policies, which is the reason why a lot of people go, I'm not going to get it. (laughs) I remember when my family lived in Texas, we actually lived in Houston for seven years and we actually lived through hurricanes. And, um, I just, I asked my dad recently, I said, Hey, did you guys have flood insurance? He's like, no, 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 we didn't have, we didn't buy flood insurance. It was too expensive. And, um, you know, even though he made a good income, it was like, well, you know, am I going to get flood insurance or I'm going to spend that money on other stuff? And normally the answer is, I'm going to spend that money on other stuff. Uh, Even with earthquake insurance in California, we went through the big earthquake and hardly anybody had earthquake insurance because it is really, really, really expensive. And if you look at the statistics, the odds of actually living through an earthquake where it does structural damage to your house is you know, like one in a million. So the earthquake we lived through was kind of like one in a million. And I will tell you, I hope, pray, everything, I'm crossing every finger, every leg, anything that I can cross, that I actually never, ever, ever have to go through that again. Like never, ever. (laughs) I cannot stress that word enough. Uh, I can still close my eyes and like visually, I can visually see like a moment to moment. And this was a lot of years ago, right? It was just, it was just that traumatic. And if you lived through a disastrous flood like this or an earthquake or any kind of natural disaster, you know what I mean? Like it just stays with you. I think, especially if you're a kid, like you just feel so helpless, right? Okay. So, so we talked about the homeowner's policies that you have, renter's policies, they don't cover flood or earthquakes, right? And interesting enough, there's a 30-day waiting period to add it. 
So it's not like you can uh, go through Hurricane Harvey and go, or even right before the hurricane and go, you know what, I want to add flood insurance. No, no, no. You would have a 30-day waiting period. So that whole time, that's not covered, right? So you know, this is just one of these things where you got to, you got to go with your gut, whatever your gut is telling you. I think another key thing that, that you should know is that the key is where does the water come from? If the water comes from the roof down, right? So up down, your homeowner's insurance will cover it. But if a flood comes from the bottom up, that's where you're going to need flood insurance. Same with renter's insurance, right? Where is the damage coming from? Is it coming from above you or is it coming from below you? Um, And I know that can sound kind of confusing, but that's really how the insurance carriers um, differentiate what types of insurance you need. All right, so I went on to FEMA's website. They're the federal agency that that covers a lot of this. You may have seen them on CNN. Um, They're kind of the ones that come in now to try and work with um, the the local governments, right, to get aid. So here's a couple facts. Floods are the nation's most common and costly natural disaster and cause millions of dollars in damage every year. I think this is interesting because if we live somewhere where we don't have to deal with floods, like we're not even thinking about it, right? And there could be people losing homes and damage all year around. Floods can happen anywhere. More than 20% of flood claims come from properties outside high-risk flood zones. Isn't that really fascinating? Um, it is to me because I think, you know, you, you think of those, those people that live in the floodplains and maybe you live in a floodplain and you had to buy flood insurance, right? And what I hear from a lot of people is like, I've never actually even had a flood in the, in the floodplain, but people out around the floodplain who didn't buy flood insurance are the ones that actually have uh, the flood disaster or some weird thing, like some weird storm will happen in somewhere that, you know, they're not used to floods happening. And then all of a sudden there's all this damage. Okay. So flood insurance can pay regardless of whether or not there is actually a presidential disaster declaration. So if you've been watching the news, you'll know that President Trump came in, said there is a disaster declaration, and so then that's when FEMA comes in, and then that's when all the kind of flood insurance claims happen. But what this is saying is that doesn't necessarily have to happen um, if for you to be able to, you know, use your flood insurance, right? Most federal disaster assistance comes in the form of low-interest disaster loans from the U.S. Small Business Administration, SBA, and you have to pay them back. FEMA offers disaster grants that don't need to be paid back, but this amount is often much less than what you needed to recover. A claim against your flood insurance policy could, could and often does provide more funds for recovery than you could qualify for from FEMA and SBA and you don't have to pay it back. So let me just, you know, break that apart for you. So what this is saying is you, if you have damage, you could get a loan through the SBA, the Small Business Administration, but you got to pay them back, right? Uh, FEMA, FEMA offers some sort of grants um, that, that you could get, but it's often a very small amount. And if you think about it, like, you know, let's look at his, Houston, like one of the largest cities now, right? I think it's the fifth largest city in the U.S. So there's going to be a lot of people pulling on FEMA. And so most of the governmental agencies are eh, somewhat bankrupt at this point. And so there's just not a lot of money to pull out for every single person that needs money that did not have flood insurance. But if you had flood insurance, you don't have to pay it back and, you know, you could collect on however much insurance you actually had. So side note, when we went through the earthquake out in California, we did not have earthquake insurance. We went through FEMA to try and, uh, you know, get some money for the half of our house that fell down. We got a very, 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 very small amount of money compared to the cost that it took to actually rebuild uh, those pieces of the house that, that fell apart. And that was just it. You know, there were actually a lot of people out here kind of, I think, scheming the system that got a lot more money, but uh, you're going to have that regardless, right? 
Okay, so again, you may be required to buy flood insurance. You may or may not. It just depends on where you live. And if you do need it, if you're in one of those areas where you absolutely have to have it, your mortgage lender is going to require you to buy it first. So you're not even going to have an option. So when you go out house shopping, if you live in some of these areas where flooding is an issue, hurricanes are an issue, you know, sometimes you could just move like a couple streets away and not be in a floodplain where you don't have to buy flood insurance. Now, should you buy it? Should you not buy it? I don't know. That's a question that you kind of have to ask yourself. Sometimes it's a gamble. Sometimes it's a roll of the dice. And I think this is why when you buy a, when you buy your first home, no matter where you live, you should be thinking about these things like, do I have a reserve set of funds that I can tap into my emergency fund or any other just hunk of cash kind of set aside that if some natural disaster happens, I can get to that money quickly to either rebuild my house or repair my house, right? It's just really important to think about these things because too many people, especially, you know, younger people, uh, something happens to their house and then you don't have the money and then you have to go into debt and, you know, it's just not a, a good situation. So that's why I'm always talking to you about like having this separate uh, cush fund of cash. It really, it's there for so many different disasters. Same thing with earthquake insurance. You know, you're not, you're not required to buy earthquake insurance and it can be, super, super expensive. And a lot of these types of insurance, they have deductibles. And so what normal happens is the higher your deductible, the lower your premium, right? If you think about in terms of your health insurance, right? If you have a higher deductible, your your monthly cost is usually less. Well, that sounds great until you get in one of these situations where you actually have to utilize it. And then, you know, sometimes it's like, well, my deductible is so high that it's almost the same amount of money that it would cost for me to just fix my place on my own, you know? So at the end of the day, I've been paying for this insurance and it's not doing me a whole lot of good. That's why you got to really know what you're buying when you're buying. You got to ask a ton of of questions. Don't just take things at face value. Don't just take whatever your insurance carrier is offering you. Make sure you read the fine print and you really understand how this works, but also make sure that you understand what is not covered because that's the important spot, the important stuff, I should say. A lot of times what's not covered is the stuff you think is covered. And then when you go through a a disaster, you're like, wait a minute. (laughs) I thought, I thought, all my stuff in my place was covered. Oh no, it's it's not. Or there's some exclusion or just something weird, right? And the last thing I'm going to leave you with is if you're shopping for homeowners, if you're shopping for earthquake insurance, make sure you do your due diligence. Check with at least a couple different agents, a couple different companies to see what they offer. Really shop around on this stuff. And you're not just cho- shopping for the cheapest price right? What you're shopping for is the benefits that you want. What is the best price you can get? So same thing with with car insurance. We always think like, oh, I'm just going to go find the lowest possible carrier. Well, sometimes the lowest possible carrier is not offering you coverage that is going to be good for you. Uh, if you get in a car accident and then you find out about that way too late, right? Once you're in the car accident. So you got to know what you're getting. You got to do your due diligence and you got to know at least just a small bit. I mean, it's so easy these days to look up everything on Google. You can pretty much find out what you need to know and then use a little bit, you know, of your own judgment to say, okay, I think this is a good purchase or, you know, this is not, this is not a good purchase, but I'm going to build up a cash slush fund on the side that I'm going to keep there just in case, right? I'm a huge fan of just in case, because I've had so many things happen over my life that I needed a cash slush fund for, and it is a beautiful, beautiful thing, my friends, when you actually have that. All right. So if you haven't done already, please find some local agency, some shelter, anything in Houston to donate to, even if it's 10 bucks, 20 bucks, every little bit of money helps. Um, and I think if we all do that, then, you know, we know that we've, we've played some small part in helping 
people down there rebuild. And that's the same thing that we would want done for us if we were in that same situation. As always, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Shauna Game. And if you love this podcast, do me a favor, please share it with your friends, spread it around, click the link in the show notes and head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. 